Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, welcome to our video for sets, sequences, and probability. Um, now, sets, uh, we're going to start with sets, because sets are actually probably the, by far the easiest uh, of the three concepts we're going to deal with in this video. So, basically, all I need to know about a set is that it is a group of numbers, uh, group uh, numbers grouped together for whatever reason. Um, and there's really only two simple things you need to know, um, and that is uh, two concepts, union and intersection. Okay, so let's say that we have one set with the numbers 3, 5, and 7, and another set with the numbers 2, 4, 5, and 7. Um, the union of these two sets would just be the combination of numbers that appears in either set, right? So there won't be any repeats. So, so say the 5s and the 7s won't repeat in the union of the sets, but every number included in either set will be in the union. So the union of the sets would then be, um, if we call this set A, and we call this set B, right? Um, the union of A and B, which you'll sometimes see described with that symbol right there, sort of like a U, right, would be, uh, let's see, it would be 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7. Now, the intersection of two sets, which is basically uh, the set of numbers that appear in both sets, right, or a, uh, a pair of sets or any number of sets, right, the intersection of two sets, uh, which would you might sometimes see uh, delineated by this symbol, like an upside down U basically, would only be 5 and 7, right? Because those are the only two numbers that appear in both sets. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, quick practice problem, as you can see there at the bottom of your screen. Set A contains all single digit odd numbers. Set B contains all single digit prime numbers. What is the intersection of sets A and B? So basically all this uh, question is asking you to do is figure out um, which numbers are in each set. So if set A is all of the single digit odd numbers, that would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, of course. And uh, set B is the set of all single digit prime numbers. Uh, we would, of course, know then that that would be 2, right? Because we know that 1 is not prime, and that 2 is the only even prime number, right? So 2, 3, 5, and 7. Right? So as you can see here, the intersection of these two sets, what overlaps between them, is then just going to be 3, 5, and 7, which is relatively simple, of course. Um, okay, so those are sets. And uh, moving on to sequences, which are uh, at least a tiny bit more difficult. Um, <clears throat> basically, a sequence is just a, any series of numbers that are separated by a common difference of some kind. Now, there are two kinds of uh, sequences, arithmetic and geometric. Uh, and as you can see, written on the screen here, um, the primary difference between the two, which is going to be uh, basically that an arithmetic sequence is going to be separated by a common difference, right, such as a plus or a minus, uh, whereas a geometric sequence is going to be separated by a different kind of common difference, of course, but uh, sort of maybe a common, uh, you know, uh, divisor or uh, multiplier, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples of that. So an arithmetic sequence might look something like 1, 3, like you like this, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and if you'll notice, obviously every number here uh, is separated by a, a factor of 2, right? Um, or I suppose not a factor of 2, but a, a difference of 2, right? Um, because, you know, 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, 7 plus 2 is 9, right? And this would, of course, carry on indefinitely. That is the nature of a sequence. Whereas a geometric sequence might look something more like 2, 8, 32, 128, right? Because as you can see, each factor here is being multiplied by a factor of 4, right? So 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 4 is 32, 32 times 4 is 128. And as you can see, a geometric sequence is obviously going to get into the higher numbers much more rapidly. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a practice problem. All right, so uh, in the sequence above, what is the value of n, as you can see at the bottom of your screen? And our sequence looks like this. It's 9, 6, n, 8 thirds, and 16 ninths. Now, uh, it may not appear immediately uh, obvious what our you know, uh, difference here is. It's obviously not an arithmetic sequence, right? Because if it were an arithmetic sequence and we had whole numbers in our first two terms, we would have whole numbers throughout the rest of our terms. But the good news is all we need to do is figure out the difference between any of the two terms we're given, right? So we have a 9 and a 6. And we know that a 6 is 2 thirds as large as a 9, right? So we know that the, that the, uh, the common difference here, the, the multiplier that we're using, is 2 thirds. 
So all we really need to do then is multiply 6 by 2 thirds, right? And 6 over 1 times 2 over 3 is going to give us 12 over 3, or of course just a plain old 4, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and check our work, right? Uh, so let's say we multiply 4 then by 2 thirds. 4 by 2 thirds, right? We're going to end up with uh, 8 over 3, which is of course the next number in the sequence, right? So that's a uh, for a first practice problem there. Now, uh, some of the more difficult sequences questions, that was actually one of the more sim one of the simpler ones, um, might ask you for the nth term, right, in the, in the sequence. So they might ask you for, say, the, you know, 24th term. They might give you the first three and say, what's the 24th term in the sequence? Uh, which may seem very daunting and may require a whole lot of math. And certainly you could just go into your calculator and, uh, you know, go, you know, make it do the same operation, you know, however many times, 24 times, right, if that's the 24th term. But really, uh, there's actually a formula that makes it a lot easier, and that is the a of n, or the nth term in a sequence, equals uh, a of 1, which is the first term in the sequence, times r to the n minus 1, right? Where n is the number we're looking for, and uh, r is the r multiplier, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a practice problem that asks us to do just that. Okay, so our question is, as you can see, what is the 12th term in the sequence that begins 1, 3, 9, 27, okay? So we have a 1, a 3, a 9, a 27, right? Uh, and the good news in this here is that we are, uh, it's a fairly obvious multiplier, right? To get from 1 to 3, you multiply by 3. To get from 3 to 9, you multiply by 3, right? So our r in this case is going to be 3. So if the formula we're working with is a of n equals a of 1 times r to the n minus 1 power, right? Uh, we know then that our 12th term, a of 12, is going to equal a of 1, which is our first term, 1, which makes this our lives much easier, right? Times r to the n minus 1, which is, excuse me, in this case, r is, of course, a 3, right? And uh, our n, of course, the number of term we're looking for is 12, so to the 12 minus 1, or, of course, to the 11th. Now, uh, so basically all we have to do then is figure out what 3 to the 11th is, right? And, wow, if you plug that into your calculator, as I just did, you'll see that we get a very large number for this answer, which is uh, 177,147, uh, right? So, again, uh, that would be difficult math if we were required to do it by hand, but because we have calculators around. Um, and, of course, you should be using your calculator on the SAT. That is, you know, obviously one of the basic principles, right? It's an advantage that you're allowed to have, so you're at a huge disadvantage if you don't use it, right? So, plug it into your calculator, you get that 3 to the 11th is, of course, this number right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to probability, uh, which is probably the most important concept we're going to cover in this video. Um, it is probably the most commonly tested of these three concepts. Though, frankly, none of these three concepts is one that is uh, tested at great length on the SAT. But of the three that we're covering, probability is the most common. Now, the good news is that there's a nice formula for probability, and it's fairly simple and intuitive, right? So the probability of an event um, is defined as... Excuse me, if I could write there. There we go. Um, the number of desired outcomes, right, over the number of possible outcomes. Excuse me, I can't write a P there, obviously, but... So, um, if we go ahead and... Uh, let's take a look at a practice problem to give us an example, right? So, um, if you look at the bottom of your screen there, you see our question, which is, a uh, bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and seven yellow balls. What is the probability of selecting a blue ball at random? Well, the number of desired outcomes in that case is, of course, just the two blue balls. And the number of possible outcomes is just the sum of all those balls, right? So three plus two is five, five plus seven is 12. So two out of 12, or if we reduce, of course, one out of six, right? So fairly simple. Um, now, to get a little more complex into probability, uh, we have one more principle we need to cover, which is that to find the probability of two events occurring simultaneously, we need to uh, multiply the two probabilities of those things happening together, right? So uh, looking at basically the same problem, ever so slightly changed, as you can see there, uh, a bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and seven yellow balls. What is the possibility of selecting two consecutive yellow balls with replacement, okay? Uh, we'll talk about without replacement in just a minute, but there's a, a slight difference here, right? So that means that every time we grab a ball, we're going to put it back 
and then we're going to choose again, right? So we've already figured out that we had 12 possible outcomes, right? And there are seven yellow balls in the bag. So you have a seven out of 12 chance of selecting a yellow ball on your first chance, your first try, right? And if you replace that ball after you pull it out, right, your next probability is again going to be seven out of 12, right? So uh, go ahead and multiply those two probabilities together. The probability of selecting two consecutive yellow balls is then going to be 49 over 144, which is, of course, quite the uh, monstrosity of a probability, but does not reduce. Now, let's consider the same question, uh, as you can see rewritten there. Uh, bag contains three red balls, two blue balls, and seven yellow balls. What is the possible probability of uh, selecting two consecutive yellow balls without replacement? Now, what that means is you're going to select a ball, you're going to have that ball, and then you're going to select another one without putting that first ball back in the bag, right? You understand the difference there? So, in this case, then, we're going to have a 7 out of 12 probability of selecting a yellow ball on our first try, obviously, right? But then, assuming we've selected a yellow ball in the first round, we're only going to have a 6 out of 11 chance of selecting another one, right? It's going to change ever so slightly, right? So, as you can see, then, we're going to have a 42 out of 132 probability of selecting two consecutive yellow balls, or if we reduce it, of course, which, if you use your calculator, you will see reduces to a 7 out of 22 probability. All right, so that's our video on sets, sequences, and probability. Uh, and I hope you'll tune into our next video, which is going to be about uh, advanced geometry, uh, circles, and complex figures. Thank you for watching.